Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome to Issue 9 of the Spinner Rack. I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. With me as always, my co-host... Mr. Ninja Turtle for this episode. Co-host of Comics Remix, Junior Ruiz. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is our all Ninja Turtles episode. Show. Show. Can you feel the excitement? <laughs> I live and breathe turtles, so to me, I mean, it's always exciting. My my, my, my notch is always turned up to turtle excitement. There is no low level for me, so what you're feeling is how I always feel. Nice. It's uh, it's Ninja Turtle 24-7 for you. Like, Welcome woo! to my world. Nice. Dude, look at my computer It's, it's in your blood. My, it's it it's literally, tattooed it in is your skin. in my blood. For reals. You know? It's a fan right there. It holds my that's, wallet. Uh, that's my wallet's a turtle wallet, too. I need a new wallet. It's been falling apart. But yeah. I refuse to buy another one until it's a Ninja Turtle. Wallet. Right. Hey, I can dig it, man. You know? I can dig it. So uh-huh. on the, the precipice of what's going to be a new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, we figured we would dedicate an episode to one of our favorite cultural icons in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I believe we call them cultural icons. Yeah. They've transcended to a place that not a lot of people can, or not a, not only say people, but a lot of things can go. It's up there, regardless if you're a fan or not. You have to admit, give credit where credit is due. It is up there. People know Superman. People know Batman. People know Spider-Man. People know Ninja Turtles. Fuck yes. You know? It's because they're awesome, man. That's how it is. But people know He-Man, but people know Ninja Turtles a lot more. Oh, yeah. A lot of people know Thundercats. But people know Ninja Turtles more. Fuck yes. It's like there's certain things, you know? It's up there. It's... You have your superheroes, you've got the Ninja Turtles, you've got Star Wars, uh, of course, Star Trek. There's certain things like that. You've got Transformers, G.I. Joe, anything in my eyes that has its own convention dedicated to it, BotCon and G.I. Joe convention, and Star Wars Celebration, or, or it's just called Celebration, yeah. down in uh, Florida. Forget about it. Dude, you know what? Earlier I was talking about telling you I want to do my own. You were. We need to say it. I'm not even going to say it. <laughs> no, uh, idea. Spo- no spoilers here. <laughs> no spoilers, son. I'll text it to you while we're recording. <laughs> Anyways, so. So who'd have thought that in 1986 a little black and white comic would just blow up into the, you know, the, the juggernaut that it is today? I mean, you've got a new I successful. Gotta uh, I got to correct you. You got to correct me? I got to correct you. Why was it 84? Yes. Whatever, I was off by a couple of years. It's all right. I was born in 83, so what does that tell you? <laughs> I was a few months. I wasn't even a year old when that book dropped. I was like I knew about nine it. in 84. I'm like shitting my diaper. <laughs> I just knew, oh. man. I knew. You knew it was it was there from the beginning. I huh? wasn't even born, man. I was mutated into existence. Nice. Yeah, you like that. Nice. That's good <laughs> stuff right there. So, so 1984 to, yep. to, to what, 2013. Mm-hmm. You got a successful toy line. I know it's successful because every time I try and go pick up a new figure, ain't none there. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it, it's... The Turtles, like I, I just said, it's going to be there no matter what. It's, it's a phenomenon. It is. It totally is. And it doesn't happen often. Transformers, like I mentioned, and G.I. Joe are big. You know, they're all, they have their own conventions. But there's just that level where they're not... Like, Transformers and G.I. Joe, to me, are just slightly in terms... I don't even say popularity because it all depends on the kind of fan you talk to commercialism, phenomenon. You've never had a phenomenon like the early 90s with Ninja Turtles. Before that, the biggest phenomenon was Star Wars, and I wasn't even yeah. around for that. You were. You yeah, know, totally. So you know how big the Star Wars phenomenon is, or was back then. The la- my phenomenon for my age group is was Ninja Turtles, you know? Everything. Yeah, nowadays you'll see whatever's popular on TV, Transformers, Bed Sheets, because Transformers is still hot. But, I mean... Nowhere near scorching as the turtles were in the nineties, early late eighties, early nineties. Dude, nobody, They're and I huge, mean, no huge, property out there. Huge. Not even Star Wars. They had a motherfucking moment. hostess pie. Okay, Star and it Wars was delicious. That, that was see all the stuff with the, the the Transformers, the Joes, especially the turtles. This was all. I I don't know how much Star Wars didn't have to do with it, but I will say that the fact that that was the dry spell for Star Wars. You know, you had what. The Ewok movie, the Christmas well, I, movie. I think because at and that point, Star Wars was, you it was know. Done. It was done. It was, it was old. Right. By the time Turtles hit popularity, what was that? The we cartoon needed, was, there was something. What was it 88 was, or 89 that the Turtles cartoon hit? So it was, it was 89, right? It was 88, 89. What? The Turtles cartoon hit. 80, Christmas of 88. My sister was. Yeah, so at, at that point, even. Star Wars had been out of the social thing for a good five years, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think you can credit Star Wars for creating merchandising. Oh, totally. 
they totally no. George Lucas totally invented merchandise. What was there before Star shit. Wars? The twelve inch GI Joes. Yeah, that that's about it. it. Yeah. So yeah, Star Wars is king of merch. You know, they they paved the way. But I mean, like uh, you know, since like you said, I got some years on you. Mm-hmm. Uh, GI Joe was huge when I was a kid. Transformers were huge. Mm-hmm. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was the next big thing. Oh yeah. And they've they've cycled back around. So you only got what six years on me. We make it seem like this is huge. Yeah, it's six gap. seven. It's not a what lot. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Thirty seven. Yeah, I'm thirty. Seventy five. 83. 75. That's right. I'm a disco baby. It's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but no, Better so... disco than dumpster. That's what that's, I say. That's what I'm saying. But uh, you, you had these cycles, man. And I don't think G.I. Joe or Transformers since the 80s have ever hit the kind of popularity that Ninja Turtles consecutively does every time they bring it back. Yeah. I think what we're seeing right now is it's almost like a Turtles renaissance. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Good show's, choice of words there. The, the, renaissance. <laughs> this show is hugely popular. The toy line is just scorching. Like I said, man, you go in the store half the time like the fucking shelf's empty because they're, they're just gone. Right, right, totally. It's, uh, they're the shit, man. It's, who, who, what's not to love? What's not to love? Well, let's let's go back. Let's start from the beginning. Rock and 1984, roll. Peter Lair and Kevin Eastman make this black and white comic book. You know, it, it becomes what it becomes. Uh, underground hit. They only printed a couple thousand copies. A take first. on, I believe, Frank Miller's Daredevil. And Ronan. And Ronan. Mm-hmm. I always wanted to read Ronan. It never happened. Um, <laughs> so the comic becomes successful. <coughs> uh, underground hit, as you will. They are approached about doing a, uh, a toy line. And they're like, okay, well, we can make toys out of these. But at that back then, I mean, now you can put a toy line out, and you don't really need so much as a cartoon. Yeah, you don't need something to back it up. Right, back then, yeah. So they're like, okay, well, we'll do the cartoon, or excuse me, we'll do the toy line, but you need cartoon to push it. You know, how are we going to advertise to children? You know, because you figure kids see it on TV, and uh, they're going to want it. So besides the commercial, you need to have something. So they went back, and they made the miniseries, which debuted in Christmas, and... Which then defined the look of the toy line, really. And it was aired over and over and over. But not because the station was trying to pump it at people. It was because it was in demand. The ratings were so high for every replay of it. I and that was it. those, uh, what, five, six episodes was the entire first season. I have all five of those on my iPod, or six or however many there are. I videotaped that shit when I was a kid. Everybody did. It was great. Now I have all the DVDs, you know? Yeah, you know, there's, of, of course, after a while, everything becomes a little stale. And, yeah, no, yeah. You know, but the, original, the cheese factor starts to play into it because you're not, you know, right, right, five or ten or whatever. But you were at the the, time. Uh, the original episodes was just the animation. You know, you got to wonder from season one to season two what happened because the animation back then was pure, like almost anime ish, very detailed, very detailed. And in season two, they looked like just straight wacky, wobbly rubber cartoon. You know, like <laughs> wait, in season one. Shredder had like all this detail to him, and now he just looks like a cheese grater. But regardless, it was still a cartoon that spanned ten seasons, um, multiple generations. Yeah. After the tenth season, they, Saban got the rights, and they decided to produce the live action show, which was like I, I think a year or two after the Turtles cartoon went off the air for good. And they're like, oh well, let's bring Turtles back. The problem was it was too soon, and you know it sucked. It was a bad format too. It was. It, that was trying to capture on the success of, as well as the, of the movies. The movies. Yeah. Now, we all know how I feel about the first movie. Fucking four star rating. Second movie was great. I'd say three, three and a half. Uh, third movie was crap, I'll admit it. You know, I didn't yeah, like see, I movie. liked that movie, man. The concept was good. I, I didn't like the suits and the pure cheesiness of some of the turtles. Like, they just threw jokes in there to throw them in there, you know? Which I know that's how the turtles are, but it's just, I don't like, oh, wow, total bummer. Like, why? I'll never forget, though, when I was a kid and Ninja Turtles 2 finally kicked. Dude, I've got so many fucking stories. I don't know if we can keep this a half an hour. <laughs> but I'll try. I'll try. When the original Turtles movie came out in theaters, I was invited to go see it. Uh, I was told no my, by my mom. She said, no, you're not going to go. We're going to take we're gonna take you to go see it. It never happened. And back then, waiting for a movie to come out from theater to VHS. It was sad. Oh, man, you're waiting years. Yeah, I remember. You know, I know this is completely off subject. I waited for the Dolph Lundgren Punisher movie. Sorry. This is how hardcore of a Punisher fan I was when I was a kid. When that movie came out on VHS, because they didn't put it in theaters here. Right. I remember I won. It's so bad. And back then, like you said, it was like fucking 100 bucks, dude, for a VHS tape. I never got that shit. No. I bought it on DVD many years later for $5. Yeah, no. Shit. <laughs> so I was told I was in the theater, never did. Finally, VHS came out. Um, I cut my cousin who actually lived next door to me. Uh, his mom got it, and they're like, "Hey, you want to come over and watch Ninja Turtles?" I was there before they hung up the phone, uh, and we watched the movie on VHS three times, back to back to back. Uh, we had skateboards. We were like, "Yeah," in the living room, playing with turtles and shit. So my sister at the time, she's about three years old, give or take, 
And um, she knew Turtles, so she wanted to watch it. My mom's like, can we borrow the cassette to watch it? My cousin threw a tantrum, dude. <laughs> He's a year younger than me. Manny, if you're listening, you remember those days. Um, yeah, he threw a tantrum, would not let go of the cassette. Almost ripped the box trying to hold on to it. Damn. So my mom was uh, forced my dad after he got off of work. And back then we lived in the city. He worked out in Elgin. Came home tired as shit. And she's like, you got to go buy this fucking movie. And he just kind of looked away to the weekend. And it, like we had the puppy eyes and shit. And was, you got to go. So he goes, he buys the movie. And I don't even remember. I Honestly, my, I don't have the memory of him bringing the movie back. I just remember all of a sudden I owned it. I was like, yeah. Um, biggest, like, I mean, it was great. I wore the hell out of it. And then Turtles 2 came out. I was told I was going to go theater see it. Never went. It, Man, it felt a lot longer this time to wait for that one. I was a little bit older. My god cousin who lived below us got the movie. And I remember, it was a summer. I'll never remember. I looked out of the window. I was looking down. And he's looking up. He goes, dude, look what I got. And he hangs the VHS out of the, the window. I was like, hope you fucking drop it. So I pull out. The, my mom uh, was looking through the flyer, and I look, and Osco had it for like twenty two ninety nine or something like that. So I'm like, we got to go. He's in the shower and shit. We're bugging him in the shower. He's like, I ain't fucking going nowhere. It's 8 o'clock at night. And I was like, you better go. 9 o'clock at night and shit. We're sitting in line at Osco trying to buy this movie. And there's a long-ass line. We get the movie. My mom's like, it was a Friday, thank gosh. She said, you can stay up late. We're staying up late now. You've seen t- part two, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. You remember the scene where they're in the TGI or the T, whatever. TGR. TGRI lab. And the foot takes the ooze and like they leave with the smoke bombs and the turtles are all like, <laughs> and they're all mad and shit. My mom's like, you know they're not coughing, right? You know, it's totally fake. And like, for some reason, it's always stuck with me. He's like, you fucking ruined it for me. <laughs> and I still give a shit to this it's day. Funny. As a matter of fact, when I get home, or when I go to my mom's house tonight, you're gonna give I'm a gonna, shit about it. Give, you remember when we watched this? She's gonna be like, "That's funny." Listen, I'll wake her up and tell her. She's gonna look at me and be like, "Go, <clears> the fuck, go to sleep." Listen, you talk about this has made me realize you're the same age as my little brother. I took him to see every one of those movies. Nice. Not only did I go see them multiple times myself, but I dragged his ass with him because he was. I was gonna take him to go see the like the live action show that they did. Okay. But I didn't have a car. Turtles at the time. on tour. Yeah. I got the, I got the. Uh, yeah, he ended up cassette. getting the, he ended up getting have, the video cassette. I don't know where the hell it was. I don't have the video. I have the audio cassette. But uh, yeah, every I man saw every one of them fucking movies in the theater. That is the only Oprah Everyone, episode I ever watched. The Ninja Turtles one. <laughs> when they were on tour and they stopped here in Chicago and they were guest stars on the Oprah show. Did you ever see that? No. It's on YouTube. I had no idea. I'll have to check that out. And it's them just talking to people in the audience, taking pictures. And it takes you back, dude, to that period, that time period. You see how kids dressed back then. You know, they all wore the Ninja Turtle shirt. They raised an audience happy for them. Dude, like I said, Shredder shows up behind the end. (laughs) And the turtle's like, no, it's the Shredder. And Oprah's like, oh my God, what are we going to do? Let me eat a muffin or something. Dude, I I remember eating Ninja Turtle cereal. Oh, dude, delicious. But you know what? I found a store who would not be mentioned. I'm not doing free plugs. Uh, they sell vintage like toys and stuff, but they sell cereal boxes as well, like sealed cereal boxes. And they've nice. got the original Ninja Turtles with Donnie's on the cover with the fucking spoon, and they've got it regular, and they've got it where it's uh, shrink wrapped with the um, with the bowl, the cereal bowl. Nice. It's twenty bucks. Nice. I'm like, I'm coming back for this. Own this box of cereal, and I'm not gonna be like the idiots on comic book man and eat the fucking cereal either. No, that is yeah, a piece that probably tastes put like up. shit. Dude, you put yeah. that piece away. Totally. Man. Dude, I can't tell you how many of those Ninja Turtle Hostess pies I ate. I, I still talk about it. Obviously, I'm telling you. It's, those Ninja Turtle Hostess pie, pies fucking contributed to my childhood obesity. <laughs> I love them shits. I still tell my, my fiancé about them shits. I'm like, baby. I'm like, they were the best pies ever, man. They had like a green icing and it was vanilla pudding inside. And I don't even know what, what the fuck that's got to do with the turtle. But they were fantastic. And I bought the shit out of them because they were Ninja Turtle. That's what's up, dude. So, so, like you were saying, the after, Saban show. Yeah, so that spun out of Turtles 3. Saban show lasted a season. Uh, it was horrible. Yeah, it was horrible. They introduced... I, you know, I'm still trying to get through it, man. As a I think your Paparella have a little soft spot, soft spot for that show. That was his childhood. Yeah, that that's, was his, that's why. He doesn't really remember the, the original cartoon. No? No, John's only 18. Okay. So... His childhood, he was born in 1990, right? If I did my years. Yeah, he was born in, I think, 90. 99, no, bullshit. He's just a young He was born in 90, 93. He's just a baby. Yeah, he just turned 18. That's when I got out of high school. Yeah, so his, <laughs> his introduction to the Ninja Turtles, sadly, was the Saban Oh, series. that's sad. And he says, I, we were actually talking about this the other day, he was saying he remembers briefly certain clips from the original cartoon, you know? And I was like, dude, you need to go back and watch that whole series. You know, you don't call yourself a Turtles fan. Yeah, no. Um, so after the Saban cartoon dot pretty much killed off the franchise, um, as far as on air we're talking about, we're not talking about comics or anything like that. It went into a dormant state from 98 
all the way through the relaunch in 2002. In 2002, Fox Kids. Fox Kids, up, yeah. And it was the Fox Box or whatever. And that series was the closest it has ever come to being like the original comics, where it was very gritty. It had the comedy, but it was very gritty. Some of the storylines were pulled straight from the books. Uh, that was your uh, thank you for still being a Turtles fan and not giving up on us. Here's what you guys really deserve kind of cartoon. Uh, it was fucking great. That cartoon was great. I'm pissed. Right after the Nexus tournament or whatever, they went and decided to do the battle. Uh, Return to the sewers. Or no, fast forward. Where they go to the future and they meet Cody Jones, who is April and Casey's grandson. And uh, after that, you know, like, okay, they wake up there in the future. They did two seasons of that. And that was still good because it was the same turtles just in the future. Uh, afterwards, they did Return to the sewers or Back to the sewers. That aired, but I missed it. And then that is the only Turtles series that has not been released on DVD in the United States. It's out like on you know other regions, Canada, right. UK, and all that shit. Get a bootleg here or there. Yeah. So I'm just like, why not? Um, I don't know if the U.S. counts it as continuity or not. I know it aired, but but then that series wrapped up with Turtles Forever, the the 90 minute animated movie which featured the Fox Kids Turtles meeting the original Turtles right, of the 80s, totally. which I thought was like, dude, I had no idea this was going to happen. Like, I was kind of a little out of it for a little bit. I remember Saturday morning, I was walking upstairs, and I was like, oh, they're giving Ninja Turtles, and I was like, yeah, I know, you know, I, I'll catch it on DVD, and she's like, no, the old ones. And I'm like, oh, they're showing the old ones, and I look, and she's like, no, it's the new cartoon, but the old ones are there. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> so I, she's like, look, and she's there's, I'm looking, I'm watching, it's the 2003 Turtles. I'm like, okay, okay. And I see one of the originals, and I was like, <gasps> and I immediately, dude, I fell down the basement stairs trying to hurry up and run down and see what the hell this was going on. I was like, I'm not even going to work today. I'm watching this. You know, and I, I was like, please replay this, please replay this. And they play, replayed it like the following week or whatever. But that's how they wrapped up that series. And uh, at that time, that's what like, you know, the negotiations were going through. Peter Laird sold off his portion of the Turtles to Nickelodeon. And Nickelodeon decided they were going to relaunch it, which brings us to our current cartoon, which is fucking... It is amazing. I, I think it's great. They nailed it. I have friends that like are huge Turtles fans, but they hate it because they don't like the... I didn't like April. They don't like the CGI and the CGI. Oh, I don't, mind, CGI it. I don't mind it the, at all. The anime look. I'm like, dude, it's fantastic. What are you talking about? I didn't like the fact that April's young, and at first Splinter looked like a damn skunk. And then when they showed some of the previews before the show actually aired, yeah, like you said some of the anime. If you ever watched the Teen Titans cartoon on Cartoon Network, the original, like from the couple early 2000s right right like when they would get sweaty they would show like a sweat yeah. drop or, i didn't like that i was like that's not but then when you actually sit back and watch it dude it is i, I think it works i'm a big great. anime fan and I, I it is it. great the comedy dude Raphael is my favorite ninja turtle i probably think that's why everything i own like i own a red truck i dress a, in red a lot people think it's a gang thing no it's not i think it's a latent you think it all it's just it's somewhere in your Raphael. brain yeah i don't know what it is um but in this cartoon dude my guy is mikey it's hard for me to get over Donnie's voice, Rob Paulson, because he's the original voice of Raphael in the right. original cartoon. No, totally. So, but after a while, it works, dude. And I love how each turtle is defined. Like, Mikey's the youngest. He looks the youngest. Uh, Don, tall, skinny. Leo, the right. He's just, I guess, the perfect-looking turtle. Raphael, very stocky but short. Mm -hmm. You know, it just it fits. And I love Splinter's... I was just like, okay. Like, to me, I never associated Splinter with comedy. Not even in the movies when he's like, I made up funny. Yeah. I didn't associate it, no. In the 2003 series, the funniest one, dude, it was actually in the Turtles Forever episode where Splinter's sitting there and um, he's watching his soaps and he's always throwing a fit because the Turtles are changing the channel. He's trying to watch his fucking soap operas. And he's watching it, dude. I'll never forget right before the news interruption breaks out that the old Turtles are on TV or whatever. He's sitting there and then the soap opera's like, she's not your sister because... She's actually your brother. And he's like, oh, dude, when that came on, I don't know what it was. I was just dying. I was fucking dying, man. I don't know. It was just <clears> great. And in the new series, he's very spot on with the comedy. Very sarcastic. The, uh... And the new show has done an excellent mix of old and new with even the comics. Yes. Uh... They, the it's like they pulled elements from everywhere. This is what worked. This is what worked. This is what worked. This is what worked. Let's go. Now, are we going to get a Bebop and Rocksteady? What do you think? I don't know, man. It looks like the new comics might give us a Bebop and Rocksteady. Yeah. Eventually. Eventually. I really dig the new IWD. IDW. IDW. Wow, I can't believe I said right? <laughs> Free stripper, Anthony Cesaro. But, uh, but uh, I, the new comics are good. The new show is phenomenal. The toy line popular as hell. Mm -hmm. You know, which brings us to the ever-looming relaunch of the movies. Oh, we can't forget the 2007 CGI film. It was all TMNT. Here. Yeah, that wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I liked it. I liked the fact that it was like it was a try. Like, okay, let's see how it was. <laughs> it was a good movie to test the audience. Yeah, no, 
I you agree. Know? How do you feel about this? Is before we get on to the Michael Bay movie, how do you feel about the pie fucker being the voice of Leonardo? It doesn't bug me. It really doesn't because it's to the point where I'm watching. I don't see Jason Biggs. I see Leonardo. Yeah, totally. I think one of the best comedic aspects of this show is Leonardo watching this space show. Yeah. Every time the dude, the captain turns around, just get some sense, and he just slaps the shit out of his co guy. Oh, man. I was like, that shit, the, like the knockoff Star Trek? Yeah, yeah. That and shit's just always great. slapping dude. Get some sense in yourself. And he slaps the shit out of him every time. And then you got Rudy as, uh, the Rudiger is doing R- mm-hmm. Raph's voice now. Yep, the Hobbit. Sam Weiss Gamgee. One of the one of the episodes I was watching, uh, Leo was like all enthralled into the show, the the Star Trek ish show, and there's like these space creatures that look like basically snowballs with horns on them, like trumpets. I don't know if you've seen that one. And uh, he's like, "We gotta get rid of these things. We gotta do it in a humane way." So the captain, like, they're surrounded and they're making these horrible noises, and the captain straps himself into the chair. He's like, "Quick, open the airlock!" They open the airlock, and they all get sucked out into space, and they're nice. like, "No!" And the captain smirks. He goes. Yeah, that did it. <laughs> I was just like, that. it's a, it's a phenomenal. I love the show, man. I'm a big fan of it. It is great. I watch it with my little baby. It is great, man. I'll buy it on DVD and show it to him in the future. You know, it's out already. Yeah, I, you know, that's one thing that bugged me. They're so hard up for the cash. They didn't wait till the first season was over before yeah, they I know. the first six episodes, right. which I still picked up. Yeah, I, I'll I'm pick waiting. It up when it comes out, as a I'm waiting thing. for Blu-ray. Did you see that they already at uh, Nickelodeon already purchased season three, and season one is not finished. Really, that's awesome. Season two, twenty six episodes season one twenty six season three twenty six nice this is like wow they already purchased these episodes and the first season is not done yet that's great that's a great sign so now on to the Hollywood future Let's of go. one of our favorite franchises Let's do it Michael Bay this worries me man does it worries me why well because I don't like Michael Bay okay you don't, don't like, like bad boys I don't like the Transformers movies not at all dude no I can't stand Martin Lawrence fuck that guy <laughs> I was watching Living Color the other day and Jamie Foxx they were doing the Hollywood Squares and Jamie Foxx was imitating Martin Lawrence and shit. Nice. He had the fucking huge ears. He's like, oh, damn. <laughs> oh, dude, I was rolling. I, was I don't rolling. Uh, I don't have a lot of faith in Michael Bay, dude. And then it bothers me to Wait, see Wait, back that. up. You didn't like the Transformers movie? No. No, really? I wasn't wasn't a fan of Transformers. Wow, okay. If, actually, if I had to pick, and I think we discussed this in the movie thing, I said my favorite of the three was the last one, mm-hmm. which didn't have Megan Fox in it. I think I'll go home and watch those movies. Some- no, I end up watching Turtles. But, uh, oh yeah, you're going to go home and watch Turtles. Yeah. I'm going to go home and force my fiance to watch Turtles. No, I bought it. I'm like, we got to watch these. She's like, no. All she right. never did. All right. But uh, it's got me worried, man. Just, I don't like Michael Bay. I don't like he handled how he handled Transformers. I'm not saying the movies didn't look good. There were some scenes I felt were a little sloppy. Shit gets a little too crazy. Mm-hmm. Obviously, that won't happen with Ninja Turtles because you're not dealing with big, huge fucking robots, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, to think that he cast Megan Fox after firing her from Transformers. That's what it was. Yeah, some behind-the-scenes blowies for Michael Bay. Mm-hmm. Megan Fox is doing her thing. What gets her roles. I guess so. It's sad to see that she's going to be April. You know? you know what? I don't have a... I like Michael Bay. I, I get it. He's Mr. Explosion, Mr. Action. Everything he does has to kind of be over the top. Um, but it matches his personality. He likes his name out there. He likes causing controversy. He likes people talking about him. Which is why last... was it? Last spring when they announced the movie. And they're like, oh, Michael Bay went on and said that they're going to be aliens. If you know your... People threw a fucking tantrum for that. Oh, yeah, totally. I didn't. People be, freaked out. Because you got to remember, like I just said, Michael Bay loves pe- his name in people's mouths, amongst other things, Make it Fox. Um, so <laughs> you got to keep in mind not just that, but the fact, if you really think about it, the ooze is an Utram product. The Utrams are aliens. So technically, yeah, that kind of would make them aliens. It would make their origin. From by association. Yeah, yeah. It's a play on words that every fan was just like, no, it's not real. Yeah. Dude, sit back and think about that for a second. That's why I, I, I was one that just didn't blow my top. I was like, okay, I'll wait till the movie comes out because that's what I'm waiting for. And even, God forbid, that the movie sucks, the fact that we're still getting a new Turtles movie is good enough for me. Like, you know what? Somebody out there wants to make a new Turtles movie, and I want to watch it. Um, Megan Fox, I've only seen her in the Transformers movies. I mean, I, I know of her or other roles. I just never watched those movies. I love the Transformers movies. The second movie was the weakest. Jonah Hex, dude. I heard that was garbage. It was, it was garbage. Um, but I didn't watch watch so i didn't watch hex i didn't watch jennifer's body i could care less um jennifer's body was actually i, I heard it was just whatever <laughs> it was all right it is what it is uh, but the, the, like i said <laughs> i knew of megan fox i don't remember watching her in anything besides the transformers though i'm a huge transformers fan as well but the second one was the weakest i'll admit but it was still an entertaining movie it, i look at transformers 2 the way i look at iron man 3 put it that way right on um my opinion third movie was the absolute best especially because they're in my hometown you know can't hurt that but i, I just thought it was the best 
Uh, I don't have a problem with Michael Bay. I liked Armageddon. I love the Bad Boys movies, especially the, the interrogation I scene. I didn't realize Michael Bay did Armageddon. Yeah. I liked, didn't he do Pearl Harbor too? Did he? Michael I, I, Bay? I think so. Not sure. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I but yeah, horrible. he did Armageddon. He did all that stuff. So it's like, okay, he wants to tackle the Turtles. Kevin Eastman is the other co-creator of Ninja Turtles. He's attached to the movie as an executive producer. Do you think he's going to let them screw up his babies? You would hope not, because he know. sure as hell hasn't let IDW fuck it up. No, IDW is actually it's, just... It's been amazing. Yeah. So with him on board, I have the faith. You know, like, okay. I like what they're doing with the, the suits. You know, this, their whole, the motion capture suits. Right, it's going to be CG. You know, the you know act, it, all the actors, I don't sorry. recognize any one of them. I do. The tall guy that's playing Donatello played a crackhead that hung out in Jesse Pinkman's house in Breaking Bad. Okay. But see, I think they got the looks right. <laughs> and they're doing it the way that they did Hulk, in my opinion, in uh, mm-hmm. Avengers. Mark Ruffalo was Bruce Banner, but when he transforms into the Hulk, you could still see Mark Ruffalo's face, right. the features. And that's what they're looking like they're doing in Turtles, which I have no problem with. Aside doing the, the best looking, you almost have to do a CGI. Well, because you, if you go back to making the suits, you're going to get Thing from the Fox yeah, movie totally. Fantastic Four. No way. That's, they they that's, pulled uh, it off with Ron Perlman as Hellboy. They did. But that was luck. It was. It was luck. Well, well that was Ron luck. Perlman's got that weird face yeah. anyway. Yeah. So I think it kind of lends itself well to that Hellboy makeup. Yeah. I think uh, I've read a lot of fan outrage. People are like, oh, they're going to CGI. It's going to be fucking horrible. The CGI looks like shit. Dude, Gollum. Yeah. You want to tell me CGI looks shit? I throw Gollum at you. Very true. Gollum was fucking amazing, dude. Mm-hmm. Greatest, one of the greatest CGI characters I've ever seen. Probably, maybe a lot of that's due to the actor underneath right. that yeah, CGI. Exactly, Andy exact, Serkis. The exact same way they did it. <clears throat> they put the dots yeah. on the guy and they're like, go. He was awesome, dude. Yeah. I stress anyone that thinks that CGI characters suck, go back and watch those Gollum scenes, especially the Gollum scenes from Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Fucking amazing. Or better yet, more Andy Serkis, go back and watch Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Because mm-hmm. he did Caesar, yeah. the, the, the ape. Mm-hmm. Amazing, dude. You can see, he, he like the, they, they're they able to emote so much expression and emotion mm-hmm. in the CGI characters now, unless you're that last Twilight movie. That, that I'm not really all that worried about it. Right. I'm just excited all around, dude. So, any, final it, thoughts so. on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Michael Bay, you're excited? I'm excited, but I, like, I, I'm i going to treat it like I treat every other movie. I will not judge it until I see it in the theaters. But the fact that it's coming to, I'm getting a new Turtles movie is good enough That's for enough me. for you. I will say I'm putting Scratch aside because you know they're making a toy line. For reals? Yeah. For reals. You know they're going to make a toy line. Out of all the Ninja Turtle toys, I have everything. Not everything, I can't say that. I have a little bit of every toy line. The only one I skipped out on was the, the, the TMNT. For some reason, I didn't pick up any of those toys. You can get all those on eBay pretty cheap. Yeah, but I didn't pick any of those up. I don't know what it was. I just did not. I had all the original ones when I was a kid, but I opened them and played with them. I so got them all. You know, all the originals from when I was a kid, plus all the package. I do have the majority of the new ones, though. I don't know why. Okay, I, I even bought, I, the, I bought, I even bought the communicator. Yeah, I know. You told me that's hilarious. The only thing I don't have are the uh, the weapons that come with the masks. Yeah. I had those, but I needed some scratch for something else, so I returned them. But they're not hard to find. So, I mean, you know, I, I'd like it to be awesome. I don't have a lot of faith in Michael Bay. I freaking hate Megan Fox. But I'll, I'll still be in the theater to see it, dude. Like you said, it's Ninja Turtles. You got to have you gotta have some hopes that it could still be good. Right. Well, what else is there? What do you mean? I just mean you got to have hope. Oh, yeah, totally. Without hope, what is there? Despair. Nice. What are you like a Sith Lord now? Is yeah. This is going to turn into a Star Wars conversation. That's why you like yeah. the red motherfucker. That's why. <laughs> oh. He is a Jedi. So that wraps up issue nine no of the Spin Rack. <laughs> Our Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles extravaganza. <laughs> if you have any comments. Wait, or, wait, wait. We got to know. Dude, who's your favorite turtle? Oh, honestly, it's, uh, it's, Venus. It's, it's a tie between. Yeah, totally. I loved Venus de Milo. She was the best. John Paparola, you're a fucking schmuck. <laughs> Sorry, no offense. I'm just busting your balls, kid. Um, it's Michelangelo, dude, is always my favorite, but I kind of have a soft spot for Leonardo too. Okay, I already answered that question earlier. He did. Yeah. So. He's he's Raphael. Raphael dude. with a little bit of Mikey love. So download previous episodes if you like this one, or if you've been listening, they get us on iTunes. Yes. Check us out at spinnerack.podbean.com, mm-hmm. comicsremix.com. Which is, like you said, no, 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 like the like, hub for everything that much. we do. Yeah, you can go to comics. Yeah, you can find Spinnerack there. Spinnerack. David right. Sanchez has finally got his, his ass on the ball on that one. <laughs> you can find everything there, man. Links to fa- our Facebook, our Twitter, uh, 
Contact us directly at comicsremix at gmail.com. In the subject header, just write who you're uh, trying to talk to. You know, either John, David, Brian, or myself. Um, Spinnerack at ymail.com. Spinnerack at ymail.com. Any questions, comments, suggestions? Yep, we're all there. We're all accessible. Anything you'd like to hear us talk about that we haven't talked about because we kind of just talk about whatever the fuck we want to talk about? We're not really Hollywood diva ish. We're like, you know, no. Yeah, hey, I I would love for someone to be like, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. Nothing I would love more than to get to that point Mm -hmm. to get fan feedback to where we're actually doing shit that people want to hear. Totally. But uh, issue nine, baby. Can. Teenage Mutant Trolls Extravaganza. And that's it for this one. We'll see you guys issue ten. Finally reaching the double digits. Right. Turtle power. Last word. Last one word to finish off this show. Cowabunga. Same word I was thinking. Or no, no, no. Now it's Buyakasha. Buyakasha. <laughs> that's right. I gotta go back to no Cowabunga. Yeah, you gotta go with the old school. Cowabunga. Cowabunga, baby. Turtle power. Good night, people. Shot, get the